In this lecture, we're going to understand what is Action and the filter hook in WordPress. We're also going to see how to create a very useful file for the WordPress theme functions.php. So let's see what is hooks. Hooks in WordPress allow developers to easily tie their own code in with the WordPress core code base, themes and plugins. In this lecture, we'll discover what hooks are, go over the different type of hooks and look at example of hooks in actions. The hooks refers to the place where you can add your own code or change what WordPress is doing or outputting by default. There are two types of hooks in WordPress, action and filter. So let's start with the first one, action. If I want to explain what is hooks in a simple word, then I would say action hook is a way to modify or change the output of the project or to add our own custom code. Actions are functions performed when the certain events occur in WordPress. On the other hand, filter hooks are used to modify a certain function. A filter in a WordPress allows you to get and modify the WordPress data before it is sent to the database or the browser. Now, once we know the difference between action and the filter hook, let's take a look at the example of action and filter hooks. To understand how action and filter hooks work, we need to create a simple function.php file. So let's create a function.php file in the root directory of your WordPress theme. So I'm going to just close this style sheet, open the explorer tab and right here in the root section, I'm going to create a new file and just name it functions.php. Now take a closer look at this file. We are not going to say function.php. We use functions.php. Once I have my functions.php, let me explain what is functions.php template file. Now the function.php file is where you add unique features to your WordPress theme. The function.php file behaves like a WordPress plugin, adding features and functionality to your WordPress site. You can use it to call WordPress functions and to define your own custom functions. Each theme has its own function file, but only code in the active themes function.php is actually done. If your theme already has a function.php file, you can add code into it. Using function.php template file, you can customize your excerpt length, add a new features to your theme, create a custom functions which you can use anywhere in other themes, you can create a dynamic menu, widgets, and you can do a lot more than that. Now let's take a look at action and the filter hooks using this function.php template file. We know that action hook used to modify or change the output of the project or to add your own custom code in the theme. Now let's first understand what is action hook. We know that the action hook used to modify or change the output of the project or to add your custom code in the project. So in the function.php file, I'm going to first create here a command. So I'm going to first add here a PHP tag and inside it, I'm going to add a command. And I'm going to just say here template name is going to be functions. Now, just after that, I'm going to just add here a single line command and say action hook example. So I'm going to create here a custom function. So I'm going to start with the function keyword and specify the name for this function. So I'm going to say theme setup. So in this function, I'm going to add a new feature to this theme. So I'm going to add a simple function in WordPress, which is add theme support. So using this function, you can add different features to your theme. And in the parameter, I'm going to just specify title tag. Now let me just explain what this function does. Now this will add a title tag in the header section of your website. So I'm going to just save all the changes and in the header.php file, I'm going to get rid of this title. Save all the changes, reload your website and just reload the source code as well. Now you can see here, we don't have here a title. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call action hook and specify this function to it. So I'm going to just simply call here, add action and to the first parameter, I'm going to specify a function. So I'm going to say, after setup theme and just after that to the second parameter, I'm going to say theme 
setup. Now, let me explain these parameters. Now, the first parameter is the action hook. And the second one is the function name which you want to execute after the theme is set up. When I save all the changes and reload the source code, you will get the title here. When I reload the source code, you can see we have a title here. We have the title of the website. You don't need to manually specify that title in the header file. Now this will add this feature to this website using the action hook. So now you know that the action hook is used to add features to your website. Now let's take a look at the second example which is filter hooks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just add here another function. So I'm going to say here function and I'm going to name it custom excerpt length. And to this function I'm going to just return 15. So now what I'm going to do is I just wanted to change the length of the excerpt function. So if we just take a look at the index file, we know that we just use this excerpt function to display the summary of the content. So this excerpt function return 55 words. So what I'm going to do is I just wanted to display only 15 words using this excerpt. So I'm going to use this custom function for that. So I'm going to just return 15 to this custom excerpt length. Now you're not limited to only specify this name. You can specify any name to these functions. But just keep in mind whenever you change this name, you need to change this name to the second parameter as well. And just after that, you just need to call here add filter. So in the single code, I'm going to say excerpt length. And I'm going to specify my function to the second parameter. So I'm going to say custom excerpt length. Now if you just take a look at this file, you can see we have 55 words here. If I just save these changes and reload the browser, you can notice we only have 15 words here. So as you can see, we just modify the output of the excerpt function using filter hook. Using add action hook, you can add new features to your website and using add filter hook, you can just modify the existing features of your website. I hope you understand how to work with action and the filter hooks. Don't worry if you're not comfortable with these functions because when we start building our finished website, you are completely familiar with these functions. I'm going to show you how you can add a different style and JavaScript files to your WordPress theme. So let's head over to the header.php file and right here you can see we just included this style sheet using this blog info template tag. But this is not the proper way to include CSS and JavaScript files in the WordPress. Now let me show you the proper way to add script and style sheet to the WordPress. The proper way to add a script and style sheet to your WordPress theme is to include them in the functions.php files. The style.css file is required in all themes, but it may be necessary to add other files to extend the functionality of your theme. So why don't we get rid of the style.css from here and add the style.css and other JavaScript files using action hook. So I'm going to just get rid of this link like this, save all the changes. Now if we just reload your browser, you can notice we don't have style to it. Now let me just back to my editor and just head on to this functions.php file. Now down here, I'm going to create a single line command and just say adding CSS and JS files using action hook. Now just start of that, I'm going to just create here a function, a custom function and name that function add theme scripts. And inside this function, and inside this function, I'm going to call the WordPress function. In WordPress, we have two functions to add style sheet and JavaScript. The first function is WP in queue script, and the second is WP in queue style. As the name implies, the WP in queue script is used to include JavaScript files, and the WP in queue styles is used to include CSS files. So let me first use this WP in queue style to add my style sheet. So I'm going to just simply hear WP in queue style. And in this parenthesis, we are going to specify the name of the style sheet. So I'm going to say here main style sheet. And to the second parameter, you need to specify the source of the style sheet. So I'm going to say here 
get instantiate URI. So using this function, I'm going to get the path of my style sheet. So this function, we return the path of this style.css file. Let me just save all the changes. And down here, I'm going to call action hook. So I'm going to say add action. And to the first parameter, I'm going to just say WP in queue scripts. And to the second parameter, I'm going to specify my function name. Add theme scripts. Now, I'm going to save all the changes and reload my browser. My style sheet is now added to my website. Now, what if you have another style sheet in the CSS folder? So, I'm going to just create here a new folder called CSS. And in that folder, you have a file called magic.css. Now, in this style sheet, I'm going to just put footer style, this one. So, I'm going to just grab this footer style cut from here, save these changes and put that in this magic.css file. Save all the changes. Right now, if you just reload this browser, you can notice we don't have any styling to this footer. So let me just add a styling to this footer using this magic.css file. So we need to first add this file in this function to this wp in queue script hook. So I'm going to just add here. I'm going to just first add a command and say adding magic.css file and I'm going to say here wp in queue style and inside it I'm going to specify the name for this style so I'm going to say magic and to the second parameter I'm going to specify the path of this magic.css file so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get the template direct to URI and then specify the path of this magic.css let me show you I'm going to get rid of this single code and call here get template directory URI. So I'm going to call this function. So this function will return the absolute path of your WordPress theme. So once you have the absolute path of your theme, you can then concatenate this path to your magic.css file. So I'm going to just add here dot. And in the single code, I'm going to say forward slash specify the CSS folder and then specify your magic.css file like this. Save the changes. When you reload your browser, you can notice the style sheet is included in your WordPress theme. Now, let me show you how you can add script in this file. I'm going to just simply add here a command and say adding JS files. And in the root directory, I'm going to create a new folder called JS. And inside it, I'm going to create main.js file. Now, in this main.js, I'm going to simply call alert and inside it, I'm going to say welcome WordPress. Save the changes and in the function.php, using this wp in queue script, I'm going to include this main.js file. So I'm going to simply say here wp in queue script. And to the first parameter, I'm going to specify the name for this script file, main. Now you're not limited to specify only the file name in this first parameter. You can specify any name to this first parameter, but make sure the name need to be unique. Now just out of that, to the second parameter, I'm going to just call get template directory URI. Now once we have the absolute path of the theme using this function, I'm going to just concatenate that path with the folder. So I'm going to call here dot and the single code, I'm going to say JS main.js file. Save all the changes. When you reload your file, you can notice your JavaScript file is now added to your WordPress, right? You will see a message, welcome WordPress. So the JavaScript file is now included to your WordPress. So this is how you can add different files to your WordPress theme using this simple WP in queue script and this WP in queue style. So I'm going to just get it off this alert because I don't want to get this message every time when I reload my website and back to my function.php file. Now we'll talk about how you can add 404 template file in the WordPress theme and why we need to add this template file in the WordPress theme. So let's see why we need to add this 404 in the WordPress theme. 
a 404 template file important to add into your theme in case a user stumble upon a page that doesn't exist or hasn't been created yet. It is also important that your 404 page a way to arrive at the right place. As the name implies, 404 template file is used on a page not found error. For example, let's say if I just open a website and search for a page that hasn't existed yet. For example, if I just search for here, if I just search here books.php and enter, you can notice here we don't have anything here because we know that we don't have this books.php in our template directory. Now let me just solve this problem and show the user the proper error message. So let me just create here in the root directory, I'm going to create a new template file called 404.php. And in this file, I'm going to just copy all the content inside this index file, just copy it and paste it inside this 404.php file right here. I'm going to just get rid of this section. So I'm going to just grab this section from here, get rid of this post area section. And I'm going to just create here a new section and call it error. And inside this section, I'm going to call h4 heading tag and say page not found like this. Save the changes and just reload your browser. When you reload it, you can notice here we have page not found error. We know that we don't have this file in the file hierarchy. So the WordPress will automatically execute the 404 file when the file is not exist. Now you're not limited to specify only this layout to this file. You can specify own layout to this file. For example, if I just remove the sidebar like this, reload my browser, I don't have the sidebar. As simple as that. And when you back to your website, you can see you have your blog post. Now in the next lecture, we'll understand how to create a single post layout in the WordPress. For example, if I just click on this my first post, we have the excerpt here. I don't want to display excerpt when I click on this my first post. I want to display all the content inside this blog post. In that case, we need to add one more template file in the WordPress hierarchy. So in the next lecture, we'll talk about how you can specify a new design to your blog post. So I will see you in the next one.